guys, welcome back to week three. We are taking a look at the sort function here. Before we get started, one of my subscribers asked a great question. So Peter, I want to shout you out for that one. You asked which color theme I'm using, and that's important for you guys that are following along. So real quick, the theme that I'm using is dark, high contrast. So if you guys want to be using the same color theme as me while you're going through these pictures, do make sure to set yours to dark with high contrast. That's the theme that I'm using. So you guys can use the same one to make sure that when you are doing your code and things like that, that your colors appear the same as mine. It'll help you guys out while you're going through this. Now, that's actually not going to matter this week, but it is important going forward, so I will be mentioning the color theme. And as usual, if these are helpful, like, subscribe. That all helps me out. That'll boost this channel and help other people too. So thank you for that. So let's get started here. We're taking a look at week three sort. There's really only one important function in here, and that's the time dot slash sort file and the text file. Now you're provided with sorts one, two, and three, but you're not told what they are. What we do know about those is they must be bubble sort, merge sort, and selection sort. Now what we know about those is that bubble sort has omega n, right? So that should be the fastest through an already sorted list. We know that merge sort is omega n log n, which should run fastest through a random text. And finally, we know that selection sort is only slightly slower than bubble sort on an already sorted list because it's omega n squared but it should be faster than merge sort on a random text and it should only run slightly slower than bubble sort on an already sorted text. Now why is that important? Because we're provided with all of these, right? Sort 1, 2, and 3 you can't see. It's your job to figure those out. We're supplied with random, reversed, and sorted. Now the reversed doesn't actually matter and truth be told you only have to figure out the answer to two of these because the third one will be obvious. I don't want it to take forever so we're not going to do the 50,000 but if it's not long enough at the 5,000 the numbers might be too close to compare. So we're going to focus on the random 10,000 and the sorted 10,000. So let's get started on that. You want to use the code that was provided. This is really the only important code that's going to matter here. It's going to be time dot slash sort file so sort one two or three and the text file that we're going to be sorting. So let's start with the random since it's up here at the top 10,000 and we're going to punch in our first sort here. All right, so sort one of random and I'm just punching this into a notepad on a different screen. Came back at 0 0.273, 0 0.212 and 0 0.036. Now let's try it on sort function 2. So let's plug that in right here. And we end up with 0 0.065 0.006 and 0.036. So that one's already significantly faster than sort one, which remember going through a random text, bubble sort should be the slowest through random. So that's important to know. So let's check three here. So let's plug in three. So for the third sort, we have 0 0.293, 0 0.165, and 0 0.021. So looking at these, it looks like sort 2 at 0 .006, 0 0.065 was the fastest through the random. Now the slowest through the random by far was sort 1. So there's a good chance right now that sort 2 is probably our merge sort. And there's also a good chance that sort 1 is going to be our bubble sort, right? So how do we figure that out? All right, so looking at these, we can already extrapolate some pretty significant data. We know that bubble sort with omega of n should be the fastest through a sorted list but the slowest through a random list and by far sort one was the slowest by a significant amount the third one was selection sort which should have omega n squared right so it should run faster than bubble sort but slower than a merge sort on random which is actually what we're seeing here finally the second sort should have omega of n log n which should be the fastest through a random text and we can see by the numbers at 0 0.065, 0 0.006, and 0 0.036 that the second sort ran fastest through this random text. So there's a good chance that number two is going to be our merge sort with omega n log n, the fastest through the random text. And then by that, we can actually determine that sort one probably is our bubble sort and sort three probably is our selection sort. The only way we have to test that now is to look at some of the sorted text. So we're going to go ahead and go through the sorted text and we're going to run sort one and sort three to see which one performs the fastest. But before we do that, we are going to plug in here that sort two most likely is using our merge sort, right? So let's go ahead and test the sorted list. So let's plug in time sort one on sorted 
and we have 0.051, 0 0.007, and 0 0.034. Now that's pretty fast, so let's see how it stands up against sort 3. So let's plug that in here. And we have 0 0.191, 0 0.108, and 0 0.045. So all of that was slower than sort 1. So when we look at sort 3 on an already sorted text, we know that sort 1 random came in at 0 0.051, 0 0.007, and 0 0.034 versus the 0 0.167, 0 0.111, and 0 0.038. What that tells us is that the sort 1 has to be our bubble sort. It is the fastest through an already sorted text. So if sort 1 is our bubble sort, we can plug that in here. And that leaves our sort 3 to be our selection sort, right? So we're going to plug that in there. Now, the how to or how do you know is actually pretty simple. We've kind of gone over it already, but we know that bubble sort has to have the lowest possible value, right? That's omega n. So it's the ideal way for running through a list that's already been sorted. It is the fastest way through the sorted text. So it is extremely likely that sort one is bubble sort. So we just want to type that explanation in here. So you can say a couple things. So sort one performs slowly on random lists, but performs swiftly on sorted list. And if you want to be more complex about it, add some more meat to this, you can say with a value of omega n, it should perform accordingly. And then merge sort. I've spelt merge wrong several times, so let's get that fixed. So when we're talking about merge sort, what we want to say is merge sort performs the fastest on random list with a value of omega and n log n this is characteristic of merge sort and then finally selection sort so we can say that with a value of omega n squared selection sort runs faster on random list than bubble but slower than merge and is characteristic of selection sort And then all we have to do now is go ahead and check. And there we go. You guys are all set. So let's do a quick recap. Bubble sort should have omega n. It should be the fastest through a sorted text and the slowest through a random text. Merge sort should be the fastest through a random text. It doesn't really matter about a sorted text. It's going to be pretty quick anyway. Selection sort should be faster than bubble sort on a random text, but slower than merge sort. So the reversed are here are kind of like a red herring. You want to use a higher number so that the numbers have a little bit more discrepancy, but not so high that it bogs down your computer. So we had merge sort the fastest through the random text followed by selection sort. Then we had bubble sort the fastest through the sorted text, which only left us with merge sort to be the third one. So you guys are all set. So that wraps up lab three of this is CS50. That was sort. I am Devin, and as always, you guys are awesome. So I appreciate it. Like, subscribe, comment if you have any questions. Look forward to seeing you next time.